Taking my scripture from Genesis 32, uh, verse 24 through 30. Just a few short verses. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore it is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I, I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. If you could lay down your Bibles and lift your hands. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for another opportunity to be in your house today. I thank you for another chance to be near you today, God. Lord, let your anointing be in this place. Lord, open our hearts and our minds. Let us hear your word. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do tonight, this morning. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. When Jacob was first born, he was the second of twins. Esau being the first and Jacob being the second. The Hebrew root of Jacob means to be behind or a uh, heel grabber. Uh, Esau's name just meant Harry. So I can't imagine either of those names being that good, naming them how they looked or how they came out. But obviously, Jacob's name did not mean anything great. He was the second son, without a birthright, without a promise. He was meant to always be behind, always be behind his brother Esau. But Jacob wasn't born with all the privileges of the firstborn. But without getting too far into it, Jacob had eventually stolen both Esau's birthright and his anointing. Some time passed, and Jacob was going to meet Esau again, and Jacob was afraid that Esau was going to kill him. I mean, I imagine I'd be pretty afraid too if I had stolen both his birthright and his anointing. And so Jacob saw an angel, and he wrestled with that angel until he blessed him. And the angel rena uh, renamed him Israel. Jacob was not a good name. But Israel meant triumphant with God. So the point that I want to make today is that you cannot have Israel without first having Jacob. You can't be triumphant without first being behind. You may not have been born with all the talent and the ability, and you may not have been born with the birthright or the promise, and you may not have been born into the best family, but I have come to tell you that you cannot be Israel without first being Jacob. You cannot be triumphant without first being behind because God said, I will make you the head and not the tail. You are the first and not the last. God has a promise for you. So you may be lost and you may be broken, but God is saying you are triumphant with him. You can receive victory with him. God can take your brokenness and give you victory. And so there were 12 tribes that came from, Jacob, uh, from Israel. And those were the sons of Jacob or Israel. I want to talk about two particular tribes, Benjamin and Judah. In the Bible, you will find that Benjamin had create, uh, committed a great sin. And so the other tribes came in and slaughtered most of the tribe to where it was almost gone. But Benjamin was eventually absorbed into the tribe of Judah to keep it from collapsing. And so Judah means praise. When Benjamin committed a sin and were falling, they were failing, they were falling away, they were absorbed by praise. 
meaning my sin has been absorbed by praise. So what do you do when you're in the midst of sin? What do you do when you're falling away, when you're on the verge of collapse? You just got to praise. You just got to get before God, lift your hands. Lord, I lift you up today. Lord, I glorify your name today. Even in the midst of your trouble, even in the midst of your trial, there is a God that is fighting for you because there is a God that inhabits the praises of his people. There is mercy here today, and there is redemption here today. All you've got to do is praise. All you've got to do is lift your hands. All you've got to do is lift your hands before the Lord. Hallelujah, oh God. He will meet you where you are. Let's lift our hands today. Lord, I thank you for the mercy that you put before me. I thank you, God, for the promise that you put in my life. I thank you, God, for every chance that you've given me. Lord, oh God, I thank you, Lord, for renaming me. I thank you, God, for giving me a new promise of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, come on, let's magnify him. Let's everybody in the building jump to your feet and thank God for the word. That young man told us what to do. In the midst of trouble, that's praise Him. Amen. Can somebody say amen? I want to give honor to God today. For He's good all the time. I want to give honor to the saints of God. For your faithfulness to God. I give honor today to my wife who is consistent, loving, and remains somehow always the same through life and I appreciate the strength that she gives to me and to this local assembly. Thank God for my children today. I appreciate who they are and that they love the Lord with all of their heart. Thank God today for Brother Landon who over the last four years as of yesterday came through one of the greatest crises in his life when his father of 42 years old passed away in a tragic accident falling off of a ladder. But he loves God and he's faithful to the Lord. Amen. Through the circumstance. When we thank God, so glad Brother Landon Kirk is here. I give honor today to our elders, our associate pastors. I give honor today to Pastor Gators, who this week led a tremendous revival in McConnellsville where lives were touched and changed at the anchor in McConnellsville. I give honor to you, Pastor Gators. I give honor to our assistant pastor. Brother Cody, amen. And we're so glad that he's now our assistant pastor. Would you thank God for that? I give honor to our elders, amen. Brother Melik, and I see Brother Sharp and their wonderful, amazing spouses. I'm going to tell you, we are grateful because God has put great people in our lives. Anybody grateful for the people that God has placed in your life? I would not be the same without these people. With that being said, I, I want us to turn today to the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 12. Amen. I could go a long time today talking about being grateful. The book of Acts chapter 12. Let's look at verse 1. After we are seated, we will also be reading extensively today. Much more verses than I normally do in a sermon. We're preaching. We will be reading from Romans 12, but that'll be just in a little bit. We welcome all of our guests. We're so glad that you are here and pray that God touches you mightily. I know one thing. I've already been touched during the praise and worship today. Thankful for this praise team, this music team today leading us. Acts 12, 1 says, Now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So it appears to me that there was a delay. Verse 4 says, And when he had apprehended him, imprisoned him, he put him in prison, delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. An unarmed preacher, having four soldiers around him they are trained soldiers to guard him because they're threatened by him unarmed all he's got is the gospel but they were adamant about shutting him down 
But you can't stop the gospel from spreading. You can't stop the church. I'm going to show you why you can't stop the church in this today. It says of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring bring him forth to the people. They he wanted to do this Simon Peter as had been done to James, but Peter therefore was kept in prison. I like the next statement. But prayer was made. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I'm going to tell you what I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful for the church that will pray without ceasing unto God for me. Somebody shout the church. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm grateful for the church of Jesus Christ. How many of you are grateful for the church? We pray without ceasing. We're here. We're we're right now at 78 years of existing, just this one local assembly. I think you ought to lift your hands and thank God that the church is still here. The body of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. May the, may the Lord bless you as you are seated. I just want to preach simply today, grateful. Somebody say, grateful. It was Tuesday, I was having my devotion in the chair that I've spent a lot of time in in the last few weeks. It was there that I got on my knees and began to ask God to bless the word that I was about to, about to, to read and to take in in my devotion, reading in Jeremiah still. And I encourage all of you in the building that sometimes we read our Bible to mark off our Christian checklist. So we can say, I got my three chapters in today. Got your 15 minutes of prayer and just check mark, check mark, check mark. And you really don't know what you prayed and you don't even know what you read. How many of you ever, ever went back the next day to read the Bible and you started reading the chapter and it took about seven or eight verses to realize you did read that the night before, but you didn't know it for the first seven? Can I get a witness? Because we're check marking. And I've learned that when I'm covering territory, that if I... If I jog or run, I, my feet aren't touching as much territory when I get to the end. But if I just walk slowly and drag my feet a little bit, I turn over some things on the journey. And I think we can pride ourselves in Christianity and say, well, I read my Bible through in six months. But did you get as much out of it as you could have if you just walked slowly through it? I think Christians have got to be careful to speed through the journey of Christianity and as, as J.T. Pugh would teach, you've got to learn to walk slowly through the crowd because you'll make your most important impacts by not rushing past people. And I'm going to say with the same is you've you got to be careful to rush through Scripture. It's amazing what you can overturn with your feet if you just drag through the Word of the Lord. Can I get a witness from somebody? Devotion is not a checklist. Devotion is reading the Bible to get to know God. Oh, my, my, my. Somebody shout, we need to know him. How are you going to get to know him? By prayer and being in the word of God. We are a Bible preaching church. We're a Bible carrying church. How many believe in the word of God? And I know we're, we're, I've, I've got the Bible. I've got unique Bible studies on my phone. I've, I've got one of them called loaded. When you touch a word, it's a bubble. When you touch the word, it brings up the heat. The Greek or the Hebrew gives you the origin of the word and exactly what it means, the name means or the city means, and it's great to have that. But if you're doing a devotion, of, uh, you, you ought to do your devotion in the Bible. That way you don't get any notifications while you're looking at the pages. I'm trying to teach you this morning as your shepherd, as your pastor, to get the most out of your time with God. We got to be careful to be so advanced in technology that we have to have it on an iPad or a phone. And the truth of the matter is you go from somewhere reading the Word of God and end up on some game or end up on Facebook. Can I get a witness from some people in the building? Look at your neighbor and say, you know you're guilty. Just say amen. We've got to get back in the book. We've got to get to know the Lord. We've got to start appreciating the things that God has put in front of us. 
There were some people that would love to have access. Matter of fact, in North Korea, they've learned that if the wind current is going a certain direction, they will send uh, balloons with, with, with uh, flyers on it and with devotions on it and the word that it will land somewhere in North Korea so people that are forbidden to read the word of God can have access to pamphlets about the word of God. I had a lady, there was a lady in my dad's church that she was from China. When she went back to China, when she landed, they found a small Bible in her suitcase and she spent five years in prison. And here we are in America and we can have 10 or 15 Bibles in our homes and if we're not careful, we won't read any of them. But I'm glad I'm preaching to a people here today that you love the Word. You're grateful for His Word. Come on, do you believe there's life in the Word of God? Come on, somebody shout, thank God for the Word. Amen. In the Word, we have every Every direction we need, we get from the Word of God. People are wanting a rhema word. We're, we're wanting somebody to speak to us and to prophesy to us. But why are you trying to get somebody to prophesy to you if you don't even get into the book? His word from somebody will never contradict his word that's already written down. Somebody shout, get in the word. Come on, elbow your neighbor a little bit and say, get in the word. You need to be in the word. I think I made my point. If you didn't get it, get in the Word. We ought to be able to ask you and say, where are you reading? You give a quick answer. I'm in, I'm in Matthew. I'm in Ezekiel. Typically, if you ask somebody where they're, where they're at in the Word and they say, well, I'm jumping around, what that means is they don't, they're not in the Word daily. I'm just jumping around. I'll just grab a verse here and there. Don't do that. You need to be methodical. You need to find out the context of everything in that. Man, I've spent too long on this. He didn't come... We got to get back in the word. Oh, somebody give a hearty amen. amen. And so get in the word. Those watching online, I'm preaching to you too. Get in the word. When you look at the portion of scripture and understanding who the body of Christ is, and, and on that Tuesday when I was kneeling down in the chair, I, 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 just, I just felt like God dealt with me about today, about we, we've got to learn to become grateful. I pictured in this service, you're getting maybe your phone out or a piece of paper and just take a moment and start writing things out that you appreciate. How about good health? When's the last time you thank God for good health? For a good breath? When's the last time you thank God? When, you know, a typical standard prayer that I pray is I, I do something like this in my prayer time. I, 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 I will walk and I, because those that are guests here maybe don't know, but I was born crippled. And they laid hands on me in church after the doctor diagnosed me and ordered the braces to crank and straighten my legs and my feet out. But God healed me on a Wednesday night Bible study. So when I'm praying, because I don't want one day for God to think that I'm not grateful. So I come to prayer like this. I, I'll start, the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, to his courts with praise. This is how I start when I come before God because before you ever ask him for anything, have you thanked him for what he's already done? And I believe before we petition him, we ought to thank him and let him know that the Bible calls it praise. Can you shout amen? Don't, don't make fun of the man that's dancing and say, why is he acting like that in church? I'm gonna tell you maybe why he's acting like that when he's, jumping and walking through the temple because the man was prayed for who had been crippled for many years and when Simon Peters looked at a man that's begging for money because he's crippled and can't get a job and he said silver and gold have I none but such as I have I give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ rise up and walk and the Bible says at that very moment his ankle bones received strength and he started doing this number wouldn't you if you hadn't walked in 20 years wouldn't you get a little happy and not worry about what people are thinking Hallelujah. I imagine he was saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every now and then the anchor, somebody's going to get out in the aisle. Every now and then the anchor, you're going to see somebody shout, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you why. Because there was a moment they needed a miracle, and when they called on the name of Jesus, he gave them that miracle. We're a grateful people. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout, grateful. And so, yes, we respond and being grateful. And I will, I will tell the Lord, I will, in my prayer, I'll say, thank you, Lord, for two straight feet. And I'm all by myself here in the sanctuary. Now, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for two good hands that lift up in the air. 
Thank you for two, two legs to stand on. Thank you, God, for lungs that breathe and a heart that beats. And thank you, God, for health. I thank you for eyes that can see, ears that can hear. Some of you are saying for a nose that can smell, a tongue that can taste. We are at a place, if we're not careful, that we really don't know what's good in our life until it's gone. And I'm preaching to you what I feel is that you need to step back for a minute, step away from the chaos, and say, what has God given me? What has the Lord put in my life? It's amazing that in the book of Job chapter 1, you'll find that the, 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 the devil challenged God, and he said, if you take his blessing away, you're, everything he touches you bless. Remove the blessing, he'll curse you. It's amazing that God allowed Job to see what could happen in one day when God removes the hedge? His children were protected. His finances were protected. His business, his health. God put a hedge around him that the devil couldn't touch. And I'm not so sure that if we're not careful when everything's going good, we don't talk to God. When the bills are paid and everything's good and everyone's healthy, that we really don't come in and say, God, I just want to thank you for things that, that Lord, I... I you, you've been good to me. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing going wrong. I'm talking about being grateful here today. I thank God for the healings we get after the trial. But how about we be grateful when we're not in a trial? I realize every service there's somebody struggling. Somebody's going through something. But I don't want it to take a trial and a miracle for me to become grateful. I just want to say, God, you've been good to me better than I deserve. You've been better to me. Somebody say amen. Now, if you've lived for God very long, that doesn't make you exempt from sickness. It doesn't make you exempt from trials. You may be seated. But what I'm preaching to you today is that I don't want it to take one to make me appreciate what he's done for me. Every day I get up, there's a hedge around me. Somebody shout all things. Romans, Paul taught the Romans in the book of Romans. He said, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout again, all things. I can't say that it's always been easy. I've been in this. I'm 42 years old. I was raised in, raised in, this, in the church. I... Uh, my, my, my parents and grandparents, uh, it's amazing. I'm fourth generation in this. But what I will say to you, in all of my years of living for God, this didn't mean I didn't ever get sick, and never have a problem, never had a struggle, never had a failure. But I'm going to tell you, it appears to me that in every case, God has brought me out. Can I get a witness from somebody? I remember a specific time in our life that Cindy and I were... were uh, I would say it was a hard time because we had a baby that was born 10 weeks early. The doctor had walked into the room and, and in her recovery and told her that the baby wasn't going to live, that she would not live. And uh, uh, Jillian, would you stand? There's that baby that they said wouldn't live. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, we need doctors, but God gets the last word. I said God gets the last word. How many believe we trust in, come on, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. For they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen. Amen. I tell her a story often because people need to hear it. It's absolutely miraculous. Jillian, I remember, I remember the fear that we had of, uh, the, the concern that we had because you weren't supposed to be born in April. You're supposed to be born in July. And when we're in the back of a NIC unit, a NIC unit mobile unit, traveling from Bethesda to OSU, Jillian, is that when we're on the way, it, uh, it, it's, it's nervous. I remember when the, when the nurse from the back leaned up in the front, he said, you better get to the hospital. This baby's on the way. And those lights come on and... He's hitting as fast as that ambulance would go, I imagine. And we're speeding there and family's trying to get in town and try to be there for our children and our other two children. When we get there, I remember it wasn't a good situation. But somebody was praying for me. 
when I stepped out and they're trying, they're telling my wife that that the 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 chaos, the possibilities of bad results. I remember I stepped out when they got everything seemingly calm and what seemingly stable and, and they knew the baby could come any moment, but Cindy was stable. I remember stepping out and there, there, when I walked out, there were some family members there and I sat down to be with them to give her a few moments alone in the room and I get a phone call from a lady that said, I was praying for you and the Lord said, don't worry She'll be perfect. She'll be perfect. And I clung to that word. I stood on that word. I said to myself, I'm going to go tell Cindy what a praying member of the body has said. I'm going to tell you one reason I get words from God. Because I believe in it. I believe in the body. I believe in the body of Christ. I believe in praying people. I believe that when you pray, something's going to happen. I thank God my whole life for praying church members. I'm going to tell you why I get good good preaching to me. Because I believe in preachers giving me a word from God that they got on their knees in prayer. I'm going to tell you why I get prophecies. Because I believe in the prophecies of Scripture. Is there anybody here that believes in the power of a praying church? You believe in the power of a praying people? There's no sickness too great that God can't heal. When the church starts praying, I said the church starts praying. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I I don't want to belabor the point, uh, but I, I do want to say that I walked back in there and Cindy, I'll never forget the moment I came in to give you the word. When I got in there, there was they couldn't find a heartbeat on Jillian. They couldn't. They were rushing around. There was nine medical staff in there trying to get her stable, trying to find a heart, trying to get the baby to move, trying to get and, and they looked at me and said, Daddy, you sit right there. We're gonna go to the emergency cesarean. And I remember, remember sitting there and God began to deal with me. We went in, the baby was born. The reports weren't well. They said her lungs were not working. She was not getting the amount of oxygen she needed to her body. But you know what? There was a praying grandmother. There was a praying people. I remember Brother Iscarito sending me a text and said, we're seeking God. Brother Gene, stand to your feet. I'll never forget that time you called me. You said, you said I was praying today. You remember that? And the Lord showed me a vision. Come on, do you believe in miracles? I I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I believe in the supernatural power of God. Hey, it's not just in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. I'm telling you, I believe in miracles. I believe in God possibilities. I believe he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. I want you to ask your neighbor right now, do you believe? Come on, ask your neighbor, do you believe that God can give you a miracle? If you believe it, say amen. I'll never forget as long as I believe. I mean, as long as I live. And I remember, prior to the phone call from Gene, I remember standing there at the bedside and reports of the doctors hadn't been well. I was standing there desperate. You ever been desperate? See, some of you don't understand desperate because you've never been through anything. You've never had the doctor's report. You've never had the long face. You've never had your your expectations not met. You don't know what it's like to have a tragedy. Come on, before you judge somebody that shows fervency and desperation, you better understand, get in their shoes and wear them a little while. I was desperate. I knew what the doctor said. I knew, I knew that it was seemingly a hopeless situation. When the nurse checks out and says, I went to the bathroom stall to pray because I knew that baby was going to die and I knew we needed a miracle, that's, that's desperate. Who cares what people think when you're desperate? It'll cause you to climb a sycamore tree, Zacchaeus. It'll cause you to tear the roof of a house to lower a lame man there because you're tired of being lame. You're tired of being sick. You're tired of hurting. Desperate. Desperate will cause a wife to go out without food for seven days because she wants her husband to get saved. Desperate. 
will cause you to change patterns. I walked into that Nick unit and you're supposed to be quiet and I was. You don't have to pray loud always, but you need to pray. I walked to that incubator. I stood beside my little baby two and a half months early and I just began to sing because the only thing I knew to do but the air and you preach so powerful. I had to pray in the midst of the tragedy. I had to praise in the midst of a tragedy. And I said, I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender leading me through paths that I must trod. I'll have no fear for Jesus walks beside me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storms rage high. Let the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me. For I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. The song says, He walks with me. <laughs> and none of earth can harm me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. When I open my eyes, and I know you folks believe me, I've never seen one before, and I've never seen one since. But when I opened my eyes, there was an angel standing there. An angel was standing there. I stand before God in the fear of God and angels were standing there. And I watched this tall angel. It was a big angel. Stuck his hands in a white raiment. It was in a white raiment, Brother Nehemiah, Brother Geo. I watched the angel stick its hands into the incubator, the two holes in it, and lift its hand into the body. I watched that happen. At that moment, I closed my eyes and I knew God's taking care of my baby. Excuse me for getting a little bit happy. <laughs> but God's been good to me. I said, the Lord's been good to me. Honey, you didn't even know. You're upstairs recovering with a fever. Wouldn't let you around the baby. You didn't know. The doctor didn't know. The nurse didn't know. I was in the NIC unit. Somebody said, all by myself. I'm going to tell you what I feel as your shepherd. Some of you have felt all by yourself. But I'd just like for you to open your eyes in the spirit and understand you might not have a physical body of a saint near you, but you've had the presence of God beside you. He said, I will never leave you. Come on, some of you battling loneliness, but if you could open your eyes, you'd see that the angel of the Lord is with you. I mean, come on, jump your feet if you believe God is right there with you. I feel him with me right now. Somebody say amen. And I opened my, I opened my eyes. The angel was gone. I'm wiping tears away from my face. Hey, glory. I wiped tears away from my face. I walked out of the Nick unit. And I knew everything's going to be all right. You see, you've got to have a moment. See, when God walks in the building, when the supernatural touch of God starts moving, it doesn't matter what the doctor said. You start having this understanding. I just have a feeling. Everything, I said everything, everything's going to be all right. It might not mean anything to you, but I'm telling you, I was desperate. I was desperate come on I want you to look at your neighbor and say everything come on look at somebody and give them a word everything is going to be okay come on I want you to shout it I think we're the body we ought to be a little happy I've got a feeling everything's going to be alright I know you've been lonely. I know you've been discouraged. I know you've been disconnected. But God's not done with the miracle. God's not done with the process. It's going to be all right. Hit that keyboard. I, I feel the menstrual of a prophetic word. I said everything. Somebody shout everything. It's going to be all right. Man, if we could high five, I would. Just elbow your neighbor and say, everything. You got to believe, though. Hey, Brother Gene, you remember that? 
I stepped out of the NIC unit. When I did, I stepped outside. I was saying to myself, I'm going to go tell my wife what the Lord has done for us. But when I stepped out of the NIC unit, Brother Gene, wave your hand high so everybody in the building can see. Come on, wave your hand high. You see that man over there? With the bride the Lord gave him? He's smiling real big. You just can't see it because he got a mask on. Brother Gene called me. I stepped out of the NIC unit. As soon as I did, I'll never forget, sixth floor. I stepped out of the NIC unit. OSU, VOSU University Hospital. Well, I stepped out, Brother Gene called me. There's nothing wrong with calling your pastor when you got a word. I need prayer just like you do. And he said, I had a vision when I was praying this morning. Praise every day, Monday through Friday in this church, six to seven. He said, I saw a vision. And in that vision, I saw a group of angels in the NIC unit with your baby. And he said, one of them stepped away from the group of angels and walked to the, to the incubator where the baby was and put its hand inside the incubator, lifted it into her body, pulled out some black. It was the infection trying to take her. He said, the Lord said, don't you worry. She's going to be, she's going to be perfect. She's going to be fine. And come up here, Jillian. Come on, that's why we clap our hands in church. Because we're a people of the name. We're a people. We're a people that believe in miracles. Somebody say amen. Come on, in the Old Testament, he parted the Red Sea. In the Old Testament, he parted the Jordan River. He called Jericho walls to fall. He called lion's mouths to be shut. Fiery furnaces not to attack. I come to tell you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you believe it, say amen. But somebody was praying. I said I was going to read Romans 12, but I didn't I done preach too long to get a bunch of verses. You read Romans 12. Y'all going to do it? That's your homework. You can go down. You sure are pretty. Hey, if I'd have thought about it, I'd have grabbed my cell phone, took a selfie, and hashtagged it, touched by an angel. Glory. But I believe you're not going to shake my faith. He's done too much for me. He's still able. I said the Lord is able. Can I praise Him in a song right now? I said the Lord's able. Lord is able to do exceedingly to do abundantly above all I can ask or think through the power that's already in me if I just bless the Lord's name I wish somebody would bless the name of the Lord I wish somebody would bless the name of the Lord and say I'm grateful for your power I'm grateful for the miracle. Lord, you're doing it right now. Come on, if you need a miracle, stand to your feet, lift your hands and say, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Lay your hands on your neighbor. During this time, you need to learn to stay in your circle so this COVID-19 thing won't spread. Stay in your circle. But lay your hands on your neighbor and say in the name of Jesus, be healed. Come on. Come on, church. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed.
Come on, say in Jesus' name. How many know it's a name above every name? Come on, God can remove the depression. He can remove the addiction. He can remove the fear. He can remove the anxiety. He can remove the regret. Brother Nehemiah, listen to your pastor. The devil has thrown every single thing at you in his arsenal over the last five years to try to separate, to try to discourage. Because even the devil knows the power of God that's in you, through you, from him for a specific work. He's trying to make you feel not good enough, not worthy for the blessing. But I want you to embrace what God is going to do for you. Because I'm going to tell you, this church is going to pray for you. Because McConnellsville, McConnellsville is going into multiplication. But you got to keep believing. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Priscilla, you just keep on believing. Tammy, keep believing. Don't be discouraged. Just believe. I'm closing right now. Remain still. How many of you are going through some things? You need a touch of God. Come on, be honest with the preacher. The Lord knows where you're at. I close on this thought. Remain standing. But in Acts 12, they had already seen a tragedy in James. Sometimes the problem in us is we've already seen a tragedy. How can we have a miracle now? How many's ever dealt with a tragedy? In modern day terms, they would call it PTSD. Or PTSD, I think that's what it's called. Post-traumatic distress syndrome. James and the King Herod thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the Simon Peter, but it's a holiday. We're gonna wait till after Easter. It appeared the man of God is gonna be taken. Tomorrow, we're gonna take his life. But I read again. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for Him. Romans tells us we rejoice with them that rejoice and we weep with them that weep. Read Romans 12. But the power of the body and the most grateful thing I am for the body of Christ is that when someone's going through a crisis, we're going to pray about it. And we're going to pray until the miracle comes. We're going to pray until the will of God is done. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to you. I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful for our elders. I'm grateful for my family. But I'm grateful for the body that keeps praying when I'm in a crisis. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to pray you out of the prison. The theme of the messages have been Elijah was left alone. He even talked, dealt with it today. If you have felt alone in your crisis, raise your hand. Come on. I see hands all over the building. But if you'll believe, God's going to open your eye and let you see the angel of the Lord near you. Maybe not physically, but you're going to see the hand of God upon you. Lift your hands. I'm praying right now all over the building. God, come on. I want you to tell the Lord, I believe in miracles. I believe in your hand upon my life. I believe in the touch of the Lord. Lord, I pray right now that what you did for Simon Peter, you sent an angel to the prison. You caused the guards to go to sleep. You let the shackles come off his hands and feet. You open the prison doors and let him out. I pray right now in this, in this room that there would be a move, that there would be a movement, that there would be an outpouring, there would be a miracle moment, that there would be a touching of, come on, you're gonna feel, in the name of Jesus, be made whole. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, I command cancer to leave in the name of Jesus. For diabetes to be healed in the name. Jesus, I pray for the shackles, for the shackles of addiction to be loosed. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for fear and anxiety to leave. Be healed in the name 
of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody clap your hands and thank God for the touch. How many feel the touch of God sweeping over you? I feel that very much so right now. If you would like me to pray for you individually, our elders, we will do that here today. We would be glad to, but I cannot dismiss without this point. There are some things God cannot heal until it's first forgiven. It's called salvation. Jesus said, except you repent, you'll perish. That's what he said. He said, you got to repent. He said, you need to repent first. That means to turn from your sin. Some things that you people are dealing with in this room is that you've got a sin issue. Paul said that when I try to do good, he said, evil is present with me. It's sin within my members. You must understand you've got to be forgiven to truly find true healing in your life. Up here and down in here. So you repent. How do I, old preacher, how do I repent? Tell the Lord you're sorry. God, I'm sorry for lying and gambling and cheating the addictions and things about I don't want that in my life anymore matter of fact the word repent means to turn I want to turn away from I don't want to repeat those things I'm asking you to forgive me somebody said oh God in Jesus name I'm asking you to forgive me everybody in the building would you say that let's repent all over the building God I don't want to be a sinner I don't want those things in my life anymore hallelujah thank you Lord Throw Acts 2.38 up on the screen. My, what a, what a beautiful service we've had here today. Look what it says in Acts 2.38. This, this is what Simon Peter preached. The one they were trying to kill. They didn't like what he was preaching. When they said, what shall we do? Verse 38, then Peter said unto them, somebody say it with me. Repent and be every one of you. That word baptized means to be submerged. I don't mean to insult tradition. I'm going to tell you, not one person in Scripture was sprinkled. Word baptized means baptismos. It means to be submerged in water. Go all the way under. How? Every one of you. How? This is the only way they baptized. This was the formula of baptize, baptism. They said, go back. Read it in the New Testament. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. It doesn't mean because of. It means in order to obtain. Get baptized. Why? Acts twenty two sixteen. 16. Why wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. How? Calling on the name of the Lord. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God's breath in you. That's new life. That's born again. How many can, can say amen to that? Now we've had a touch of God. We've had the supernatural. The hand of the Lord has moved. How many have felt that all over the building? The touch of God. But right now, it's time for prayer. Right now, it's time for, for commitment. If you're here today and you say, I want more of God. I want to be close to the Lord. I want to step away from sin. Or I want someone to lay hands on me. As the Bible says, anoint me with oil. James 5.14, in the name of the Lord. That the prayer of faith will save the sick and God will raise me up. I want you to come all over the building. If you want prayer, you want to give your life to the Lord. You want to repent of your sins? Don't wait. Don't worry about anybody else. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But right now, I need a touch of God. We're going to social distance when we can. We're going to be very safe when we pray. For the Lord's calling people home. The Lord's calling people to Him. Amen. All over the building, is there anybody else? I promise, no one's going to embarrass you. No one's going to call you out. But we want to pray for you. There's an unlimited amount of miracles that are in this building. Amen. Amen. Elders, would you help me? I want you to go ahead and lift your hands and say, God, I repent today. I give my life to you. I want to be right. I want to be holy. I want to be pure. With the congregation, come on, church, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it, God, good day. We're believing we're a touch of your spirit.